Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the ACNS guidelines for an EEG brain death recording. So the reason why I'm making this video is because a couple weeks ago I did my first brain death recording and I had to look up the ACNS guidelines in order to know exactly how to do a brain death recording since I had never done one before. So I just wanted to show you guys the 10 rules or ACNS guidelines that are used for brain death recordings. Now the first rule is that a full set of scalp electrodes should be utilized. So the full 1020 system, just like you're doing a regular EEG, so nothing changes on that. Now if the patient had recent head trauma or surgery, let's say they had a crany and you really can't put an electrode in a place, you can just move it over, make sure you annotate it on the study for the doctor, or just, you can probably leave one electrode out, but. A full set of electrodes is the most ideal situation. In most situations, you can apply a full set of electrodes. Now the second rule is that your electrode impedances should be under 10,000 ohms, but over 100 ohms. So just like a regular EEG, you usually wanna have it under 5,000 ohms. So this should be no problem for you if you're an experienced EEG technologist, but if you're inexperienced, make sure they're all under 10,000 ohms and over 100 ohms. Now I don't think I've ever had a problem of my impedances being under 100 ohms, but just double check just to make sure. If you're having trouble getting your impedances down, just go back, re-scrub the spots, and make sure you're placing the electrode right where you scrubbed, and also make sure that the hair is not in the way and that you part the hair and are able to place the electrode paste onto the scalp because if it's sitting on the hair, that'll affect your impedances. And also if you put it in a place that you didn't exactly scrub, uh, for one, that's not where you measured and you're gonna mess up. And two, if it's not where you scrubbed, the impedances are gonna be high because it's gonna be in a place where you didn't clean. So make sure you put it in the exact right place and make sure the hair is out of the way. And you should be able to get to your impedances under 5K ohms in an ideal world, but at least under 10,000 ohms. That is the ACNS guideline number two. The third ACNS guideline for a brain death recording is to make sure the entire system is tested. So first, you're gonna to wanna to do your basic calibrations. I'm sure you guys are all familiar on how to do that. And then second, you're gonna to wanna to do a tap test. So you're gonna to wanna to take either a Q-tip or something or just your fingers, I usually just use my fingers, and tap on all the wires. You'll see an artifact pop up on the EEG, make sure everything's in the right place and make sure all the left is on the left side and the right is on the right side. Just double checking because this is, after all, a brain death recording and you're gonna you're gonna to wanna to double check your work. Uh, this is, a tap test is also good on long-term monitoring recordings because you don't wanna put the wires on the wrong side and have it on for long-term monitoring that would not be good so my friend lewis he learned that at yale that they do that there with their eegs and i think it's important now i don't always do a tap test but it is you know double checking your work and it is ideal so just tap on the wires make sure they're on the right side make sure the calibrations are good and that way the integrity of the eeg recording system has been tested for the brain death recording now the fourth ACNS guideline for a brain death recording is to make sure your inter distances are at least 10 centimeters. So in the usual bipolar montage, you know, double banana, you're gonna see about 6.5 centimeters between the electrodes, like for example, FP1 up to F3, that's gonna be, you know, six, seven centimeters maybe, so that's not enough. And sometimes on a brain death recording, if you're just using the standard longitudinal bipolar montage or a reference montage, you're, you're not gonna see anything, but if you used a longer distance between electrodes and your montage, then you have a higher possibility of seeing some cerebral potentials or some brain activity. So a good montage to use, maybe your, your lab will have a uh, specific brain death recording montage, so that would be the one to use. But at first you can look at it in the regular montage, regular bipolar, just to check it out. And if you don't see anything, then to follow the ACNS guidelines, you're gonna to wanna to use a montage, for example, that uses, that goes from FP1 to C3, and then C3 to O1, or FP2 to C4, and then C4 to O2. So that way you're, you're kinda of like skipping over electrodes, so that way you increase the distance between the electrodes, and that way there's a higher possibility of seeing some brain activity because there's a different, bigger difference between the electrode sites. Now the fifth ACNS guideline for a brain death recording is to change your sensitivity from the regular seven microvolts per millimeter 
to two microvolts per millimeter. Now the reason why you do this is because that makes it most likely for you to see the brain activity. So it increases the sensitivity so that way the brain activity is going to be higher amplitude. Now for example if you're doing a pediatric patient with super high amplitude brain activity you might want to change it, the sensitivity from 7 microvolts per millimeter to 10 microvolts per millimeter because you don't want the the channels of the waves overlapping because that makes it way too difficult to read so you just change the sensitivity now on a brain death recording you want to change it from 7 all the way down to 2 so that makes it super sensitive and that way you'll pick up any little brain activity that happens to be on the recording. And that's what we're doing, right? We're just checking to see if there's any brain activity in the patient, and that's why you use a sensitivity of two, which makes that most likely to happen. Now on this sensitivity, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you record for at least 30 minutes. Now on a regular EEG, you just wanna record for at least 20 minutes. That's a guideline for that, but on a brain death recording, you want it to be at least 30 minutes on the sensitivity of two. So we have the highest chance of picking up any brain activity if there is any. Now the sixth ACNS guideline for a brain death recording is to use the appropriate filter settings. Now in most labs, the basic filter settings, they filter out any activity on the EEG that is over 70 hertz and any activity that is under one hertz. And most places, pretty much every place, uses a 60 hertz or a notch filter to filter out any electrical inf interference that'll be coming in from all the different medical equipment that you're gonna find in the ICU that is probably gonna be there during a brain death recording. So the ACNS guidelines say, don't be shy about using the 60 Hertz filter. They encourage it. Pretty much you can just keep your filter settings the same if you haven't changed them. If you do that, you'll be fine. Now the seventh ACNS guideline for brain death recording is to use additional monitors whenever necessary. So probably the most important one in a brain death recording is the EKG electrodes. So you can record the heartbeat because these records are very often contaminated with EKG artifact, so an inexperienced technologist might see the record and be like, oh, these, these are spikes, that, that's brain activity. No, if you have the EKG monitors on, you'll be able to see the heartbeat line up with the spikes, and then you'll be able to see that, oh, that's just heart activity, because the heart creates, creates electrical activity that is actually stronger than the brain activity, so sometimes it can bleed into the EEG record. So you're gonna wanna use your EKG monitors or any other monitors that you deem necessary to make sure that the recording is solid. Now the eighth ACNS guideline for brain death recording is that there should be no EEG reactivity to intense auditory stimulation, somatosensory stimulation, or visual stimulation. So when you're doing your recording of the patient, you're gonna wanna call out to their name, see if they respond to auditory stimulation. If you're doing a brain death recording, probably not gonna happen. If they don't respond to your auditory, just voice, then you can move on to the somatosensory stimulation. So what you're gonna wanna do is stimulate all four of the patient's limbs and annotate it for the doctor on the record and see if there's any reactivity on the EEG. So in order to do this, you just squeeze their hand, go on to the next one, see if there's a response, go on to the next one, see if there's a response, do their feet, see if there's a response, all four limbs. And this is actually kind of difficult to do because the computer's on one side of the bed and at least two of their limbs are on the other side of the bed. So you have to run back and forth. So I came up with a software solution to this, guys, and I'm testing it right now. So that way you won't have to run back and forth. It'll be like magic. It'll be almost like having another person typing in annotations for you. That's as much as I can give away right now. It's still secret. I've been testing it. So I've been working on a lot of different software solutions for EEG. I've tried ad artifact reduction. I've tried I open eyes close labeling. I mean, I did that, but I don't even know if that's really important. But this ICU activations assistant that I made, magic. This was the winner. So this is the one I'm actually alpha testing at my hospital. So if you're doing a brain death recording, my software can definitely help you out when you're doing your somatosensory stimulation. So that's the second thing that you have to do. It's not out yet. Don't worry, guys, but I'll let you know when it is. So just stay tuned. And the third type of stimulation is visual stimulation. So you could do photic stimulation on the patient, stimulate, see if the uh, occipital cortex has any reaction to the light. If it doesn't, then do it and document it on the EEG for the doctor. Now the ninth ACNS guideline is that these recordings should only be made by a qualified technologist. You don't wanna just send in a student to do a brain death recording and have them be like, oh yeah, it's good. No, you don't wanna do that. 
In an ideal scenario, you're gonna have someone who has an REEGT certification, make sure they're board certified in, in EEG, so that way they know what they're doing. I'm working on getting my certification right now. I have all the requirements done. I could take the test at any time. I just don't wanna pay $700. So, yep, there's that. I'm making my hospital pay for it. I'm still working on that. So make sure you're a certified EEG technologist if you're gonna be doing these recordings on a brain death patient. Now the 10th and final ACNS guideline for a brain death recording is that a repeat study should be done if there's any doubt about electrocerebral inactivity or brain death or electrocerebral silence. There's a couple names for it. They just wanna get fancy with it and have different names for it. But those are all the names for it. And if there's any doubt about it, if you see activity that you think could be artifact, could be brain activity, you don't really know, the doctor doesn't know, the doctor's gonna be making that call. And if they want a repeat study done, then they'll order another one and you'll be able to see if there's, it's actually brain death. You can reproduce your results. That's something that's done on evoked potentials, I know. You're gonna to wanna to be able to reproduce the evoked potential. And if you can reproduce it, then it's pretty good. Then it's good for the doctor. But if you can't reproduce an, an evoked potential, then you, you kinda of wanna do it again. Maybe something went wrong, but that's a whole different thing. But this is just the ACNS guidelines for brain death recordings. Thank you all for watching. My name's Jared Beckwith. Make sure you hit that like button. Share this video with your friends if they have to do a brain death recording. Um, I know it'll be helpful. It's way better than just reading the text. It's boring. I'm here presenting it to you in a fun and happy way. So make sure you hit the like button. Comment down below what videos do you guys want to see next. Let me know. Reach out to me in the DMs. I love you guys and have a wonderful day.